Hi all. Uh, hi all. Uh, I thought of uh, posting a geometry intro here. Uh, this is just an introduction lesson on geometry. We will be posting much many videos in the coming days. Uh, now geometry. Let's come on the geometry. Why it's very important. Uh, it's extremely important topic because you will see the past CAT papers and the last four five years. So many questions are being asked from geometry. Geometry is also difficult for many because why? Why exactly geometry becomes difficult for many? Because there's so many theorem there, so many topics there, and don't direct questions are given. It involves application of theorem. You have been given a situation in which you need to apply your theorems, whatever you know, and in exam-like condition where you have two three minutes to solve a question, it becomes extremely difficult to apply those concepts unless and until your practice is of a particular level. So let's see how we should approach such a topic which is extremely difficult and has a lot of formulas to begin with. Let's say I want to give an example. Let's say uh, with triangle. So most of, most of us read theorems. Uh, what do we exactly do? We read a theorem. We try to memorize it. We try to reproduce it. We try to, you know, kind of... Uh, draw some figures, go back to book and again like to see what exactly is a ortho center, exactly what exactly is a median, what exactly is a in center and it becomes pretty difficult to take account of all such things and that's the problem because going forward what you need to do is you have to make yourself apply those things which you learn in a day just learn three theorems, four theorems, five theorems, but try to apply it. And how to apply it? Let's see in the next slide. So that's not the correct way. Why? What's correct? You don't understand thing by reading it. You understand it by keeping it in your mind for analysis and later applying it. You need to try to understand it from a layman's perspective. You try to write it without help of books and other sources. And what exactly happens? You un you own a concept only if you keep that in your mind for a certain time. You try to understand it, you try to see it from different perspectives, you make different kind of situations, you find that okay, in those situations I am thinking something else, these are the situations in which it is working, these are the situations in which it should be applied. So there are so many things involved here. I mean you cannot just read it and close your book and see yeah, you will understand geometry and it's not it's that simple so let's understand that with an example let's see what exactly is the approach now triangle now we know that uh, if we have a three points which are collinear we used to prove that AB plus BC is equal to AC I mean they are in a straight line so AB plus BC is equal to AC now just shift this B by a particular level so what we will do, we will shift it by a little. So it becomes B dash. Now it becomes B dash. And if we sum these two lengths, we will see that AB dash plus B dash is greater than AC. Because when it was below, I mean, these two lengths were e equal to AC. But if I shift B dash a bit, the length of two sides become greater than AC. So what exactly to me? It's saying that... In a triangle, the sum of two sides has to be greater than the third side. See, we have come to this point after the application of it. We have actually done it and saw how it becomes triangle. So, in a triangle, we get an idea that triangle for the existence of triangle, we have sum of two sides which should be greater than third side. So, A plus B should be greater than C, B plus C should be greater than A, and C plus A should be greater than B. So, any two side I take, any third side I take, my theorem says that sum of two sides is greater than third side. Similarly, if we take an external point, I had take a, taken a point there in between lines like B and C. Suppose we take a point like B dash here. We can prove that the similarly, the difference of two sides is smaller than third side. That means modulus of minus B is smaller than C, modulus of B minus C is smaller than A, and modulus of C minus A is smaller than B. Second concept. Now checking type of triangle based on sides. You have been given a situation that you have been given three sides and you have been asked what kind of triangle it is. So ABC are sides. You have to find out the largest side first. This is the most important find. 
that you need to find out the largest side first. So if you found out the largest side first, the c square should be equal to a square plus b square. If you get this condition as true, obviously only the c square, if it is largest, can you know balance the a square plus b square and become equal to it. In that a scenario, your angle C will be right angle and it will be right angle triangle. In second scenario, suppose your C square greater side k square is greater than the square of other two sides, then it becomes an obtuse angle triangle and angle C will be obtuse. In the third scenario, if C square is smaller than A square plus B square, your C becomes an acute angle and the triangle is acute angle triangle. I have already posted a video a video on CAT 2008 question based on this concept. Please check that video. Uh, it's a very important concept. You should understand it. Now, suppose we take an example. If A plus B plus C equal to 14, how many triangles are possible with integral sides? Let's assume that C is the largest side. As I do not know the largest side, I can assume anything. I can take C as largest, B as largest, A as largest. I have taken C. Now, I have been given that the sum 3 side is 14. So, A plus B plus C is equal to 14. Now, suppose what I do. I try to make this equation into an inequality. Let's see how I do it. I, want to I will replace A by C, B by C, and C by C only. What will happen if... अगर a जो कि एक छोटा वैल्यू है उसकी जगह एक बड़ी वैल्यू रख दे c और b एक छोटी वैल्यू उसकी जगह एक बड़ी वैल्यू रख दे we have then 3c greater than 14 why let's let's prove this like i have 2 3 and 5 the sum is 10 is given as 10 suppose ab 2 ke jagah if i keep 5 which is the largest value 3 ke jagah 5 uske jagah 5 so obviously i will have a sum greater than 10 this is what we are doing here so we have 3c greater than 14 and c greater than 14 by 3 which is 4.xx. What kind of inference you can draw from it? If you have a perimeter p, your largest side will be greater than p by 3. This is a very important inference. Please remember it. Next, we know a plus b plus c is equal to 14. Now we know that sum of two sides is greater than third side. This is an important theorem because it test the existence of triangle so a plus b will be greater than c now in this equation i have a plus b and then c two parts here now a plus b is a smaller value than c a greater value than c so if i replace a plus b by c i mean by a larger value oh, sorry by a smaller value a plus b is a bigger value i am replacing it with a smaller value then what happens? This equality becomes inequality. Let's prove it. Like I have, suppose I have a value like 2 plus 3 plus 5 equal to 10. Now, in place of 3 plus 2, if I take 4, obviously it becomes smaller than 10. This way only, I have taken a smaller value than a plus b, which is c here, and then I kept c as c, and then 2c becomes smaller than 14, thus equal values 2c greater is smaller than 14 c smaller than 7 is the other condition we get so if you have been given p as perimeter your largest side will be smaller than p by 2 so we get a very important result here that if p is the perimeter then we get large p by 3 say larger greater than larger side and smaller than p by 2 so your larger sides range depends upon perimeter here now let's approach the question again. now if i have got 4.xx greater c and c is smaller than 7 so c will have only two values c equal to 5 and c equal to 6 because i have already been given that the all the sides are integral so if i take c equal to 5 i will have a plus b equal to 9 list list all the values i will have 5 4 6 3 7 2 8 1 but i know that i have taken an assumption here that c is my largest side so I cannot take 6 3 here because the moment I take 6 3 my a becomes the largest side 7 2 again a becomes the largest side 8 1 again a becomes the largest side so these are not permissible values the only permissible value is 5 4 because in that case also the c is the largest side we cannot take away the fact that the c is the largest side here even if another value exists of the same value only c is the combined winner with a of the largest side in the second case 
we have to take that value for sure c equal to 6 a plus b is equal to 8 so we break it in 4 4 5 3 6 2 7 1 in other cases 4 4 c is the largest side 5 3 still c is the largest side 6 2 still 6 6 2 6 is the largest side so c is the largest side but in 7 1's case i have a as the largest side so i cannot take this value so i find total four values are permissible so the answer so total four values are permissible let's if you want to check the type of triangle so 5 square is 25 obviously 5 square is 25 and these twos sum will be smaller than so it will be acute angle triangle 6 square is 36 4 square 4 square 16 plus 16 so 6 square is greater than 4 square plus 4 square so this will be obtuse angle triangle 6 square is 36 this is 25 this is 9 so 6 square is greater than 25 and 9 is 34 so again obtuse angle triangle obviously 6 square say is smaller than 6 square plus 2 square so we will get acute angle triangle so inference if a plus b plus c equal to p is given the larger sides range can be found out we can find out the values also we can find out the type of triangle also thank you very much for watching my video here i will be posting a lot of videos on geometry pnc algebra in coming days and a lot of many videos on lrdi please like and subscribe my channel i totally need your support and i will be able to do these many videos only when i be supported by you all thank you so much